Okay, brilliant. Hello and welcome everybody. This is Lisa, Job Coach Germany. It's great of you to join me here again today. And um, obviously we're back to our normal sessions on Wednesdays at 2 p.m. in the afternoon and I'm very much looking forward to talking to you today. So um, first of all, I wanted to let you know that on Saturday, I'm going to go live again with Sean from the Journey Experience. So stay tuned here. I told you about that a couple of weeks ago already that Sean and I will be talking with each other. And um, yeah, basically I can't wait to interview him this Saturday. So first of all, you will hear a lot about his journey and maybe you will learn some about um, his way of how he moved to Germany and then um, also maybe he can give you some hints and tricks on finding and landing your job in Germany actually. So Pani is here, hi! <laughs> I'm just waving at you, it's great of you to, guys to be here, thank you. So um, then obviously something else that I wanted to share with you guys is that I will be starting a group coaching very soon and if you are interested in that feel free to click the link in my bio wherever if you're <laughs> clicking on my profile um, in my bio you will be um, guided towards the information on the group coaching and Henry is here as well. Hi Henry! So, and the group coaching is basically a 12 week program where we will go through your application process step by step from finding the ideal job uh, of yours to creating your application documents to actually preparing for the job interview. And then obviously thinking about some follow ups uh, steps that you need to take with regards to your work contract and your probationary period. So this is everything that you will learn during the group coaching program and the doors will be open only for one week. So if you decide to work with me, there will only be one week when you can actually sign up for this program because I only offer it twice a year. So that being said, if you're interested in that, just sign up for the waiting list to be the first one to get the info on that. And then what I thought about this entire career coaching drop-in session, I would like to twist it up a little bit. So from this week starting onwards, I'm going to implement a little quiz in order to get a feeling of what kind of information is most important to you right now. Um, I thank everybody who is always participating in my quizzes that I'm doing every day. It is supposed to give you some thoughts and um, support you with your with regards to your mindset, especially when it comes to job applications, because obviously this can be a very sensitive topic. And I want to support all of you who are following me here to really stay motivated and staying in the game and until you find your dream job here in Germany. So, but what I thought now is that I'm going to um, implement a quiz every week to find out what kind of information is more important to you. Because obviously I have a vast amount of information that I would like to share with you guys here during the lives, but some of you might be more interested in, I don't know, covering letters, others are more interested in the CV and how the setup is, or maybe some of you guys are interested in the visa process, or maybe you are interested in setting up your LinkedIn profile. So from now on, I will always give you two choices and then you can basically participate in the poll. And then from that, point onwards, I will go with the flow and go with the topic that you are interested in the most. Okay, that being said, something that I would like to share with you today is the covering letter. So stay tuned and feel free to ask any questions that you might have with regards to the covering letter. And um, yeah, maybe we will start with the rough setup of this document. Actually, maybe you've already heard or you already know the cliche that Germans love their rules. We love our rules. We love bureaucracy. Actually, I don't, but <laughs> many Germans are seen or we all as Germans are seen as very bureaucratic. We have a lot of paperwork that we love doing and that we put a lot of our time 
into. And that being said, actually, did you know that our covering letter or any form of a formal official letter has a specific norm, a specific rule that is called DIN 5008. So if you ever wanted to know how an official letter in Germany is set up, how the format looks like and how many centimeters on the top, on the bottom, on the right, on the left you need for your letter, you want to know, then simply type in, in any of the search engines of your choice the the name Dean 5008 and you will find the norm of our official letter, which is also the setup of our covering letter. Covering letter in German is called Anschreiben, Bewerbungsanschreiben, and that's what we're talking about today. So basically there are some very strict rules how this um, cover letter is uh, set up and how it is structured. With all of the modern trends going on, obviously there is some leverage and you can be a little bit more creative, but with regards to that, we will go on um, into detail with another session where I will be talking about alternative ways of how to apply. So if you have any questions, feel free to send me a message here. And Henry says that he needs to leave. Thank you very much for sharing your thoughts. Thank you, Henry. Thanks for joining me here. And I hope to see you again next week. So, um, so, and but what does this Dean 5008 actually tell us? Basically, it, it gives us the setup of having our address first, then it'll be the address of the company that you are applying for and um, the name of the person that you are addressing. Then below that, we will have the location and the date where you are currently based. So where you're living, where you're basically where, where your flat is, where your apartment is. Then underneath that, we have in bold letters, the subject line. And the subject line is obviously the topic. What are you, what do you want to say in that official letter? And it's basically something like application for the position of customer support or for the position of um, strategic manager or anything like that, any kind of position that you are interested in. And the job ad that you have found, you use the name of the job ad. And sometimes in the job ads, they also have um, in brackets or somewhere on this particular file, a hashtag with a reference number. And this reference number can go into brackets in your subject line on your cover letter as well. So let me just quickly have a look at, um, I just wanted to take a look at Facebook in order to see whether there have been any questions yet. No, okay, brilliant. So underneath the subject line, we continue without bold letters anymore. And we um, have our first line with addressing the person that we are addressing this cover letter to. So first of all, it is very important that you find a name somehow. Do everything possible, everything that um, you can do in order to find out the name of the person that you want to address. There is, I think there's maybe 2% of the time when you can never find a person. If that's the case, you can still go with dear sir or madam or in German, sehr geehrte Frau, sehr geehrte Herren, sehr geehrte Damen, sehr geehrte Herren, and so on. But normally 98% of the time, you will be able to find a person that is working in the HR department that is responsible for this particular job ad. And that is what I want you to be aware of. Find that name, find that contact. You can try finding it, first of all, if the company has done a, a brilliant job on the job ad, you will find the contact reference name of, uh, on this job ad. So there will be a, a lady or a gentleman that you can actually talk to and address. That's the name that you want to go for. Or if that's not possible, try to find a telephone number and call the company. Call the company and ask them, who am I supposed to address on this cover letter? Um, or if that's not possible, try to search on your networks, try to search on LinkedIn to find a person that is working in the HR department and try to contact them there. 
I have found this job ad on this website and I would like to know who I'm supposed to address this to. And here I would also like to point out to everybody that a covering letter is still very important in Germany. It will make you um, have an advantage compared to everybody that is not sending a covering letter. Yeah, so in Germany, we normally always send for our application a covering letter, which is one page, and a maximum of two pages for the CV. So this is the minimum that you are supposed to send. If you're not sending the covering letter, there might be some certain circumstances when you don't have to send it. However, I would still be very... Um, I would still insist and always um, try to encourage all of my clients to really write that uh, covering letter because it will make you stick out. It will make you, um, this is the way into the door, as I would say. If you're writing this on point, then you will be invited to the job interview. And that's what you want to do because obviously they don't know you. They don't know who you are. They don't, they want to get a first feeling for you. And if you know how to uh, phrase word, uh, phrase sentences and how you can actually bring across that you are a great value added to the company, then they will invite you to the job interview. And that's what you want, right? So um, let me just quickly take a look whether there are any comments. No, not yet. Uh, Okay, good. So, um, so, and then underneath the line when you've addressed this lady or the gentleman, you are starting with an introduction and you can already implement a little bit of motivation. Why you are um, applying for that company, where you found the job ad. And obviously, maybe you can think about why you are applying in Germany, why you are applying in that particular city, um, and or maybe why you are applying for a job in this industry, in this field, why this job? Yeah, so this is something that you can use for your introductory part. The introductory part is not supposed to be very long. This is maybe roughly, I would always say maybe three lines. Then after that, we start with our main part. And the main part can consist of several, several paragraphs. So one paragraph, so I always recommend to have two paragraphs where you are using your skills and your knowledge and match it with the job application, uh, job ad that you found. So if the job ad is looking for somebody with teamwork skills, specific Microsoft Office um, skills or some specific coding languages and um, programming languages and uh, somebody that is or they are looking for somebody who is very communicative and so on. These things you want to match with the two paragraphs in the main part about your work experience. So you are talking then about first your latest position that you've had. And if you didn't have any positions yet because you've just finished studying, then you can obviously talk about projects that you've done at university and or you anything that you have learned during and during your uh, internships or anything that you've learned during your apprenticeship whatever you have done any kind of skills from the job ad that you can uh, match with things that you've already experienced yeah theoretically from the or from the academic background like university or from your practical background your work then the second um, set um, or the second part, the second paragraph of your main part can be a different aspect. It can be a, a special project that you've worked on. It can be a different um, part. So if you've in the first paragraph talked about your work experience, you can use the second paragraph to talk about your academic background or you can do a mix if you have two topics that you would like to talk about, about your work experience, because your work experience is already so extensive, then you can obviously use that and match it with some other skills that they are looking for, some of the other requirements that they are looking for in their job ad. So always match it with the job ad, okay? Um, 
And there will be a different session about unsolicited applications. We will talk about that and what you need to focus on that later on. But with regards to um, the covering letter in general, if you have a job ad, this is what you need to look out for. You're looking at the requirements and the skills that the company is yeah, that they want, yeah? And I talked about must-haves and nice-to-haves, and these are the things that you need to match in your first two paragraphs of the main part. And then you can also think about the tasks, again, they have written it in the job ad, the tasks that you will be doing on the job once you have, once you've been hired, yeah? And from the tasks that you're supposed to do, obviously, hopefully, you have some experience with regards to that already. And hopefully you can match that in your cover letter again. So you want to show that the task that you are supposed to be doing in the future with that potential employer, that you have done some or many of them already. And then you can express that in these two paragraphs, yeah? So I always call it like work experience part one, work experience part two, or work experience, academic background. That's what I normally tell my clients. And then there will be the third paragraph of the main part. And this is the most crucial part. And now listen very carefully, because this is the paragraph that gets you the seat for the job interview. If you nail this part, you will be invited. You will get the call and you will be sitting there talking to the company, talking to the to the potential employer, and then you can convince them during the job interview. And this part is about the company. So basically, this is the relation to the company, to the position, and your motivation, why you fit to that particular company. Normally, a lot of applicants always want to talk about themselves. They want to show the company I'm the greatest. And that's brilliant. That's what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to tell them you're great. The company's great. Let's be great together. But um, this is actually not what the company or the HR people that are looking at your job application, um, what they are looking for. They are looking for whether you have actually done the research about the company. Do you know anything that they haven't heard of yet? from other candidates. This is what gives you an advantage compared to other candidates. Because if you do your research very well and you find out specific things that make you even more interested in working with that particular company, that might be the mission, the vision of the company. It might be anything that you've seen on TV, on any kind of interviews that they have given, anything that there has been written in the, um, Anything that has been written in the newspapers about the company, anything obviously that sparks your interest, that sparks joy in you, that lets you burn for the company. That's what the employer wants to see. That's what the HR people want to see. They want to know why do you burn for that company? And that's what you're supposed to write in there. So here you can basically do a very extensive research. I always tell my clients, try to look for something like, are they maybe an employer of the year? If so, why? Why have they become, why have they been awarded with the employer of the year? Or have they, are they maybe encouraging people in any kind of social projects? And what are these social projects? Are any of these social projects interesting to you? And do you want to be part of that as well? Or have you heard about anything that the company is doing for the employees? Why you want to be a part of the team? That is what you write in there. Okay, so this is the most important part about the entire application, to be honest. Yeah, they don't know anything about you, but they have seen that you've put all of the effort and the research in to your application. And that's why they are going to invite you to the job interview. So basically, we have the main part that consists of three paragraphs. You can obviously shorten it, make it two. That's brilliant. The less, the merrier. Um, and then in the final part, which is basically, um, it's not a summary, but it's basically the ending of the um, cover letter. It's, it will tell um, the company when you can start, what your salary expectations are, and um, that you are looking forward to being invited to the interview. So, and 
here, let me tell you this. Um, you don't have to state the salary expectations unless they're asking for you to do so in the job ad. Again, take a look at the job ad. I cannot stress this fact enough. If they say, please send us your application documents with your salary expectations, you need to write that in there. Yeah, because otherwise it'll look like, okay, we have set this task and this person cannot even answer our question that we've had. And you don't want to be... Yeah, you don't want that your application lands in the bin just because you didn't put the salary expectations in there. So this is basically the, the general setup. Something that is very specific for applications on the German in the German labor market is that then, so in English you would write something like sincerely and your name. In German we write mit freundlichen Grüßen or mit freundlichem Gruß. And then you you have some space and then you write the name and in that little space, you will have to sign it. So we are signing our application documents. Okay. And that is something that you shouldn't forget. And then below the printed name, you can write something like attachments and what you want to attach. If you have the space, but you don't have to, they will see how long your documents are, like how big the file is, how many pages you are sending. Um, However, if you want, you can write attachments and then you write below what kind of attachments you are sending. So um, now um, let's take a look um, at certain mistakes that you should try to avoid. So um, basically, oh no, let's just go back one step again. So. Um, the standard, the basic standard of the DEAN 5008 covering letter or official letter is basically that we have a, a normal A4 size paper. Yeah, and we don't do any more. Then you are using a font that is readable. So best is Times New Roman or anything like uh, Arial or something like Helvetica, Verdana or Georgia. Things are like fonts that are easy to read. Then with regards to the um, size of the font, it's always great for you to use something like between 11 and 12. Yeah, so not more. And if you're using a modern style um, covering letter or a modern style format, you can always change that up. However, if you just want to make sure that you have you, that you can tick all of the boxes, just stick with 11 to 12. Um, then um, with regards to the um, to the lining, it's basically that you have um, either just 1.0 or 1.5 spacing in between. That's fine. Then write short, concise sentences and don't make them too long. This is especially important for Germans because we love long sentences with many commas. But this is not what we are supposed to do during our or on our covering letter. Yeah, Sh um, short, precise sentences. And then obviously, that's the most important part. Write an individual cover letter for each and every single position that you are applying for. Don't use any generic applications. I know that during the job application process, while you are looking for a job, there can be a huge amount of applications that you are sending out. It might be that you are sending um, two per day or I don't know, this month you want to send 20 applications and you want to use, you just want to be very time efficient. However, this is what kicks your job application documents out, out of the game. You are out of the game. You're not competing with the others anymore if they see you have used a generic covering letter. Yeah, so be very individual, very specific. And this is something when I talk to you about the part or the paragraph that is related to the company, how are you going to use a generic cover letter if you have followed the rule of really finding that information about the company and put that in there? And this is something that the company is looking for. Yeah, they want to see, have you actually researched me or are you just using, like, have you researched our company or are you simply um, writing this application just to send another application out there? 
So, um, then something else. Um, always um, have some questions. It'll keep some questions in mind. Um, oh, Suya is here. Hi, Suya. That's great of you to be here. <laughs> Thank you very much for joining me here. I'm talking about covering letters today. So, um, and um, there are four questions that you need to keep in mind with regards to your intention when writing this particular piece of paper. It's your aim. What is your aim and what is the aim of this job ad, of the position that you're looking forward to? Um, then what kind of tasks are you supposed to do if you are going to be this hired employee in the future? What are the requirements? Must-haves, nice-to-haves, these are the ones that you want to bring in. And what is very important to the company, like their mission, their vision, their values, and so on, okay? So, and now, last but not least, I would like to talk to you about a couple of mistakes that you are not supposed to do anymore. Expat Resilience is here as well. Hi, thank you very much for joining me. So I'm talking about the covering letter and let's take a look at some mistakes that you're supposed to avoid when writing your cover letter. Very important, use the correct names. So use the name of the person from the job ad or the person that you are um, that you want to address this application to and be very careful to write this name to spell this name correctly the second one um, is basically um, yeah something like just using one covering letter for all of the different uh, for all of the different applications that you want to uh, send out there yeah um, okay so and if you have a job ad that uh, states a name in like that states a name for this particular position use that name use that contact to address in the covering letter yeah not any person that you know from the company then, um, now, something in combination with the CV is you don't want to be repetitive. So don't waste the time of the recruiter. Don't waste the time of the people that are reading your application by simply stating everything again that you've already written in your CV. They will look at your CV. Probably they will look at your CV first and then they will take a look at your covering letter but they don't want to see anything that has already been written in the CV. And that's why you can shorten your covering letter. Yeah, you can, you can make it really precise because there are already so many data in your CV that you don't need to repeat in your covering letter. In your covering letter, you just want to match your skills with a task, with a job ad, and obviously you want to talk about the company. So, Please keep that in mind. Let me take a look whether anybody has any questions. Um, let me see. Okay, I think there are no questions so far. Okay, brilliant. So, and um, that's basically everything that I wanted to tell you. So stay tuned for next week's uh, career coaching drop-in session. Philo Kelly is here, hello. And with regards to the upcoming career coaching drop-in sessions, as I said before, there will be a quiz or a poll so you can decide what kind of topic you want me to talk about, okay? And stay tuned for Saturday morning because on Saturday at 11 a.m. Central European time, I'm going to interview Sean from the Germany experience and I can't wait. And I hope you are as fired up as I am because I actually can't wait and I feel so honored that I can um, interview him. So thank you very much for everybody to join me here. Have a wonderful Wednesday and I'll see you all on Saturday. Bye. And by Facebook.